So we're talking about LUTs again. I made a video about LUTs a while back, but it only contained information on how to apply a LUT. And also it contained a mistake, which I corrected in the description, but nobody reads it. So this video is going to replace that one and also expand on the subject a little bit. So let's start from the beginning. What is a LUT? LUT stands for Look Up Table. It is simply a set of numbers that is going to transform one image into the other. And there are basically two types of LUTs. 1D LUTs and 3D LUTs. And what is the difference? 1D LUT is going to change less parameters of the image compared to a 3D LUT. For example, 1D LUT is going to change your white point, color balance, and contrast. And 3D LUT, in addition to all of that, is going to change also hue, saturation, and luminance. And um, how do you differentiate between them? How you can tell whether this LUT is 1D LUT or 3D LUT? Well, if the file format is .LUT, it means that it is a 1D LUT. And if the file format is .Cube, it means that it is a 3D LUT right in front of you. Now, let's talk about types of LUTs, because most people are familiar with only one, the one that is going to be used during color grading process to achieve a certain look, but there are several LUTs in addition to that. The first one is a technical LUT, and this LUT is used to transform your image from one color space into the other. Example, you are color grading your project and you're monitoring it on your monitor, like you usually do, and it is a Rec. 709 color space, but if this film, if this video is going to be projected in a cinema, you need to transform it from Rec. 709 into DCI XYZ, and for that there is a lot that exists. And its purpose only to transform your image from one color space into the other, and it is called technical LUT. The other one is called calibration LUT, and it is a LUT that is typically installed in your monitor. For example, you are a colorist, and sometimes you receive footage that is going to be seen on TV, sometimes they are going to be seen on YouTube, or sometimes in cinema. For that, you're gonna need three different monitors, or only one that contains three different calibration LUTs. Your monitor has been calibrated to display particular gamma really, really accurately. For example, for web it is 2.2, for TV it is gamma 2.4, and for cinema it is gamma 2.6. And you can switch between them to view your image, how the audience is going to view it on a particular device. And for that, there is a calibration LUT. The next one is very popular, it is called a speed LUT. This LUT is used to transform your image from log to Rec. 709. It is a very popular one. Many people use it to shortcut your color grading process to make it a bit easier. And this LUT is going to pretty quickly transform your image from log looking to Rec. 709, which is going to make your life much, much easier. The next LUT is called Viewing LUT. This LUT is very important when a director and cinematographer they start working with the colorist on the pre-production stage because they want to develop look before they start filming. When they developed look, colorist is going to export a lot and director of photography is going to upload that lot onto a monitor. And that's how you can monitor what you're filming and imagine how it's going to look on the final post-production stage when the colorist is going to achieve a certain look because it has been done beforehand and uh, cameraman and director of photography they can monitor how you, they need to change wardrobe and how they need to change lighting and how it's going to look once the movie is finished it's a very handy and important lot now the next one is called creative lot and it is the most popular lot it is lot that is going to help you achieve a certain look and to understand how you can apply that LUT, I'm going to transition to another me that is sitting in front of the PC. He's going to explain everything to you. So now let's have a look on how you can apply a LUT inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's open DaVinci Resolve, let's go to the color page, and here is the example footage that I have. And before that, we need to go to the settings, and here everything is set by default. I didn't want to complicate it, so everything is by default. So, here is the footage that I have. If you had a footage that was initially in the Rec. 709 color space, all you need to do if you use a LUT that was downloaded or purchased anywhere, all you need to do is to create a node, go to LUT, go to your collection and apply that LUT. That's 
it because this LED was originally designed for X709 color space and it's going to work perfectly on your footage. For example, my Canon 1DX Mark II is capable of only capturing video in Rec. 709, so if I wanted to apply a lot, I would do it like this. But, fortunately or unfortunately, this is footage from RAT in RAW, which is log-like uh, footage, and I cannot just apply a lot on this footage. So, before I am able to apply any lot, I need to make it transform. So, this is the transform node, let's enable it. And let's open. I just use color space transform and input color space and input, input gamma. You need to know those parameters in order to make this transformation before applying a lot. In this particular case, it is red white gamma to RGB, red log 3G10, and we are transforming it, it output color space rec 709 and output gamma rec 709. And only after that we can apply a lot that we want. So let's enable our lot. Uh, I applied something like this, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't really matter. All of these LUTs were designed for X709 color space and I downloaded this free pack. I do not even remember where I got this uh, pack, but it's pretty crappy, to be honest. And all of the corrections that you now want to do, you need to do before all of these nodes. For example, this is the node that is reducing the highlights of this image. And to have all of the flexibility of this image, you need to create this node and apply all of the corrections before the transform node. So that's it for uh, an a lot that was designed for Rec. 709 color space. But if you are going to use the LUTs that were initially uh, here with the DaVinci Resolve, and I'm talking about these LUTs, these film look LUTs, they were not designed for X09 color space, so the procedure is a little bit different. And it's different just slightly. If I disable everything and I enable only transform node, it is going to transform from those two parameters. They are the same, red, white, gamma, RGB, red, log, 3G10. But the output gamma is Cineon film log, because those LUTs, they were designed for Cineon film log. And after that, you're going to apply a lot. And before that, the correction note that is going to reduce the highlights and do everything that you want to do. So this is the only difference, whether you are transforming the footage into Cineon Film Log or Rec. 709. That's it. And after that, you apply the LUT that you want. Now, where do you take those LUTs? Where do you get them? Uh, actually, this is not a problem. You can get them anywhere. You can download some of them for free, you can buy some of them, because every person, especially on YouTube, who's doing something camera-related, film-related, he's got a collection of his personal lots that he's developed and he's selling right now. Typically, they're going to be applied on the Rec. 709 color space. And only those lots, they are pre-installed in DaVinci Resolve, they were specifically designed for Cineon Lock color space. What do I typically do? And which LUTs do I purchase? I do not purchase LUTs. If I want to make color grading a little bit easier, a little bit faster, I would just use the LUTs that are pre-installed in DaVinci Resolve and then build my look from that uh, step further. I do not see what's the point of buying different LUTs because those looks are typically quite easy to achieve on my own. But if you've got no understanding on color grading, if you have no idea what you are doing, sometimes those LUTs can save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. So that's it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.